That's it. <laughs> so that's the law of attraction. And that's about recognizing in the moment that it's not a coincidence. Okay. It's not a one-off. It's the magic starting to happen. It's the ability of putting out there what you want to the universe and the universe in some way or another, sending a message through the ether to the other guy. Hey, you know, Kyle's looking for you in some way. Listen to the vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm very happy to welcome Mr. Martin Salama here, who is the architect of the, the Warrior's Life Code. Warrior's Life Code. All right. Anyways, life coach and author. And man, you got some great things coming out, but we're going to have a great conversation. And let's start this off. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Well, first thing is, Kyle, thank you for having me here. I'm excited to be with you. And I, I honestly loved your topic about vibes because vibes is what moves everybody around. It's the energy that someone's got. And if you can move your vibe into someone else in a positive way, then you're, you're, you're moving the energy needle up just that much more. So good for you, man. Uh, so yeah, I'm known as the architect of the warrior's life code. And for me, life is everything I do, which stands for live incredibly full every day. And I'm not just meaning about having a happy life. It's also about having a meaningful life. You could be happy without meaning and you could have a meaningful life without being happy. So if you could incorporate both of those into your life, then the vibes are just off the off the chart, as it were. Now, well, as I was reading uh, about your your well your biography, I noticed that there was a seven steps to an abundant life. So, yep. do you mind discussing that? Sure. So, one of the things I talk about, and it's actually in uh, something I've released recently. It's in my card deck, which is called Warrior to Warrior. If it's a visual that everybody's watching, you can see it's W O warrior to warrior. My Brooklyn action can easily screw that up. So <laughs> <laughs> go from being worried to being a strong worry warrior, but the seven steps, the, for the abundant mindset. Okay. And I take the war, the word warrior and turned it into an acronym. Mm -hmm. Okay. And broke down the seven steps in there. And the first one is wisdom. W, what am I talking about? Always keep learning. Always look to be that much more wise because as wise as you think you are, there's still a lot of stuff out there that you know <laughs> nothing about. So just keep your mind open for ideas. Mm. Well, I just happened to yesterday go out to the river and as I was sitting there with my feet in the water, I, I just been thinking about how I've been kind of grumpy lately and just, uh, I don't know, I'm just angry and I don't know why I'm angry. And while I'm sitting there, I'm trying to meditate and I'm thinking, okay, I need to get all this negative energy out of me, let it flow out and then in, embrace some positive energy and I'm sitting there with the sun beaming on my face and I almost could feel it. Mm. And, and, you know, you go through a period where you're, you just feel like your batteries have run down and you need to yeah. recharge. Yep. And although I'm, I'm feeling a lot better today, I could still use some more charging up if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So when we go and I don't know, take your course or if you coach us, whatever, how do we get that, that, that energy back? Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of that has to do with how you wake up in the morning and what you're looking for out of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you wake up in the morning and you go, I'm going to be grateful. And I like to tell my clients, I like to tell people I speak with, I have a, a notebook, not just a, you know, one of these wire bound notebooks, a nice like moleskin type of notebook. So it's got some, some meat to it and some value. Mm -hmm. And every morning I write down three things I'm grateful for every morning. It could be anything. Thank God, you know, today that my wife made me a great cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, thank you for being a beautiful day. I don't care. I'm grateful that my grandchildren uh, spent the day with me yesterday. Whatever it is, just put out that attitude of gratitude. 
So you start with that. And for me, I pray. I do a little prayer with myself and do whatever. And then I, I say to myself, okay, I'm going to repeat my mantra every day that I live incredibly full every day. So now I'm ready for the day and I'm looking for opportunities. Now, will the day always have opportunities? Will the day never have problems? No. But when they come, at least my mindset is, is working in the, in, the, in the area of looking for the positivity for the, for, the, for the opportunities that are out there. So when things kind of start going wrong in your life, do you think that you're attracting that yourself? Absolutely. I definitely believe in the law of attraction. Um, and it's for, you know, a little bit of my story, you know, in 2008, when the world fell apart financially, my wife and I were working on a project for five years to build a multi-million dollar tennis club and health center in New Jersey. And it took us five years because we had to find the land, do the feasibility study, start getting the architects and the engineers, then go to the city and get all the approvals. And all these things take time, especially the city part, right? And we go to the city, they're like, okay, great. Now go get a civil engineer to see if the, if the, the effects that it will have on the parking lot and on the streets and the sidewalks and, you know, and the traffic and all that stuff. We're like, okay. And it took us five years to get through all that. If it had happened in 2006 or even 2007, the banking was such that you could walk into the bank and it was almost like you were going to Costco. They'll hand you samples. They'll give you money like it was like you were in Costco, you know? <laughs> you know, when you go to Costco, you can have lunch there. If you... <laughs> That's the way I felt it with the banks were. They were giving money away. You went, oh, I just refinanced my house last year for a 500000 Oh, really? We could get you seven fifty dollars now. <laughs> that's how wow. that's it was in, in, the, in the 2006, 2007. 2008, started to see some of this change. And I went to the bank in the summer of 2008. I'm like, okay, great. I'm ready. You said when I'm ready, come back. By now, I'm three plus million dollars in between myself and my investors. To get to that point, you know, mm. hiring the engineers and all that. And the bank's like, yeah, we're not lending right now. Things are slowing down. I'm like, what? What oh, are you no. talking about? A month later, Bernie Madoff, subprime loans, all those other things fell like a house of cards. And you know where I was? I was on the bottom of the house. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So just like that, I was wiped out. And it took me about a year to get through that and mm. say, okay, now what am I going to do? I have no money left. Uh, I, I have to figure out what I'm going to do next. And I went through a depression and I went through a little therapy and some coaching. And I finally came out the other side saying, you know what? I, I, I don't want to be a businessman anymore. I've been doing that for almost my whole life. You know, I, at that point, I was 45 in 2008, 2009, 46. I was like, okay, what's next for me? And I thought about it and I decided I loved coaching. I loved being coached and I had been doing it without even realizing it my whole life, when people would come to me and talk to me, I would be coaching them. I was like, okay, I'm going to become a life coach. And right before I started coaching, my 24th wedding anniversary, my wife said, I'm done. I want a divorce. Oh, no. Right. So my head, my head was like, why does everything keep happening to me? That same thing that we were talking about earlier. It's like that mindset of it's happening to me. But I decided, you know what? I think God's sending me a message here. Oh, you want to be a life coach? Good. Go there. Figure out what's wrong with you. Maybe you could figure it out for yourself and then move on. <laughs> you know. And that's what happened. And I went to coaching, training. And that first weekend, they said, you know, you're walking in here. You don't have to stay who you think you have to be. Mm -hmm. You could be whoever you want to be. Like, wow, that's pretty cool. And that's where I started to learn about the law of attraction. And now I talk about things that are happening through me instead of things happening to me. Hmm. Well, also, you know, I, I, I talked to someone about this before and they were trying to tell me how to you know, ask for things to come into your life. And so, I, I mean, I did exactly that for it was nearly a month. Every mm -hmm. night before I'd go to bed, I would, you know, say thank you for everything that I have. And, um, you know, I would like this to come into my life, but I was trying to do it in a way where it didn't sound like I, I, I didn't have it. 
Right. Right. Sense. Absolutely. And nothing changed. What am I doing wrong? Right. Okay. Well, it's interesting because that goes right into the next letter. And guys, we didn't set this up before, <laughs> 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 which is the letter A of the acronym for warrior. And for me, I call it the cycle of A's. Ask, act, and attitude. Okay? So the basic level of the law of attraction is ask the universe, ask God, whoever your higher power is, for what you want. Mm -hmm. The next part of it is, is where it, it changes from the law of attraction to get deeper. Because okay. people think, oh, the law of attraction is, oh, ask for what you want, and it'll happen. Right? So, for example, or whatever you're thinking about attracts to you. So for example, before I got divorced, I kept on saying, I don't want to get divorced. I don't want to get divorced before she asked for it because I knew it was coming. But the universe heard divorce and just gave me what I was, what I was talking about. Right. If I would have said, I want to work on my marriage. I want to stay married. Who knows? But that being said, other than my four children, looking back now, her asking for the divorce was probably one of the best gifts she ever gave me. Mm. you know because it it knocked me on my on my ass and it said okay what are you going to do now you're going to go into your pity party or you're going to figure out what the heck is going on so that's where the next a comes in so the first a is ask mm. ask for what you want then act start doing things to what you want you could say okay god i want a million dollars but what are you going to do to get that million dollars what are the steps you're going to take to make that materialize right? right you got to be accountable to yourself in some way that's where coaches come in that's a great way to be accountable to yourself and then here is the third one which is the toughest one and you touched on it you try to have this uh, this mindset of not feeling lack okay right. and it's very difficult but it's about changing it from not feeling lack to feeling abundant and when you put it out there the last a is attitude have an attitude of no matter what happens, it's okay. I'm not emotionally tied to the result. Because you may go along the way, and all of a sudden, things aren't going what you, the way you thought. If you're not ready for it, if you're not feeling it, you're going to, oh my God, it's not happening, and all the emotion will come out. But it could be, again, I'm going to reference God or the universe, it could be them telling you, you need to make a course correction. So recently somebody told me, you know, I prayed to God and he didn't answer. I said, he did. You weren't listening. He mm -hmm. said no. <laughs> because he didn't think that was what you needed in your life at that moment, in that circumstance. Okay. Well, and it wasn't so much that I was asking, per se. I mm -hmm. was thanking I like you said, if you want to reference him as God or the universe, I was thanking him that I already had it. Right. Instead right. of saying, you know, you know, I want a million dollars. Well, then that's sounding like, oh, well, you don't have it. Then that's the negative part of it. So gotcha. I didn't want to didn't want to ask that way. I was just like, thank you for giving it to me. And, you know, yeah. thank you for, you know, a new truck and a new home and all these things. And right. And, and then I get frustrated after, let's say, this about three or four weeks have gone by, and I'm like, ah, why is this not working for me? And I yeah. feel like I've just wiped out everything that I've been working on since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you. And uh, one of my mentors, her name is Genevieve Davis. I was on a call. She was doing a coaching call with a bunch of people on her questions and asks. And this is something that somebody asked her about. And I you know, understood it already, but I liked the way she put it. She goes, if you saying something like that, oh, I want to have a new truck, a new house, you know, and I'm going to feel like I have it act as if you have it, right? What happens is if you go for the golden ring right away, you don't have full belief in yourself that it'll happen. Okay. So that's where the, so then the mindset of lack starts to seep in because you don't truly believe it. But if you say, let's say I want to, go to a million dollars. Well, that's a big jump. How am I going to get there? A little bit at a time, inch by inch. It's a cinch yard by yard. It's hard. So you go, okay, to get to a million, I got to get to 5,000. I got to get to 10,000. What steps am I going to do to get there? Once you start to see that that's working, 
you're building your belief in yourself and in what you want that you can then build on that and say, okay, where do I want to take it now? Okay. You know, many millionaires say the first million was the hardest. Getting to 10 million was easy. Well, I did notice that I was thinking about a particular person the other day and I haven't talked to him in a while. And I said, you know, I'd really like to talk to him. And then out of the blue, a week later, I get a message. And not only did I get to talk to him, but he's coming from Canada here to, to Texas. And he'll be here by uh, what Thursday or Friday. So I thought, right. well, that's crazy that here's somebody that I haven't talked to in a long time. Just thought about him and boom. He messages me and says, I'm coming. That's it. <laughs> so that's the law of attraction. And that's about recognizing in the moment that it's not a coincidence. Okay. It's not a one-off. It's the magic starting to happen. It's the ability of putting out there what you want to the universe and the universe in some way or another, sending a message through the ether to the other guy. Hey, you know, Kyle's looking for you in some way. And what about intention? Does that also affect whether you're going to receive something or not? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and um, uh, there's a great book written in the 30s, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. And about a year later, he wrote another book that they didn't publish until 2011 called Outwitting the Devil. And in that book, he talks about a conversation he had with the devil. And now you can either say, okay, you had a dream about it or whatever, but the way he writes it, you really start to believe that he had that conversation. And in it, the devil says it's the ones that are the drifters, drifting mindset, the ones who don't have intention. Those are the ones that he goes after and he wins over because they're not intentful with what they want to do. Mm. So what is the R part of it, or say the first so, R so part the of it? The first R is realization. Okay. Be content that I have everything in my life that I'm supposed to have. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean you don't want more, but appreciate and have the realization that everything you have in your life is there. That's a tough one, because it's almost paradoxical to saying, how do I want more if I'm saying I have everything? It's right. about recognizing I love where I am in my life. But that doesn't stop me from pursuing more and doing more. Just keeping that mindset of a part of not needing the other things. Desiring it without wanting or needing it. Hmm. Well, that's one that's kind of tough to swallow at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to chew on it a bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, and don't get me wrong. I'm I'm very grateful for everything I have. I definitely have more now than I did, you know, 10 years ago. Right. Um, I, like you, my, my first wife decided that she uh, would rather be with a younger man and took off. And I felt after that happened, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Cause I noticed my financial situation changed because mm. I mean, we were forever, being behind in the rent and the phone getting cut off or the lights getting cut off the gas. I mean, you name it, it was getting shut off at some point. Right. And she was wasting our money. And it took me a little while, but I got back on track and, you know, I don't really have that problem anymore. Um, and took me 10 years. I asked God, Hey, can you send me a good woman? And lo and behold, uh, I met my wife that I have now. Surprisingly, how much we had in common and how much that she was able to bring into my life and vice versa. And right. Life is just, it, it's so much better. It's hard to describe. I'm, I'm feeling like yeah. I'm, I've got the I family that I've always <laughs> wanted, you know? Yeah. You're, you're, you're preaching to the choir here because... <laughs> You know what? I never realized what my life was before mm -hmm. until I didn't have it and recognize what was good and what wasn't, right? And 
going through coaching and going through that whole thing of understanding that I was living in a world of self-conscious instead of self-aware, mm. which is a deep thing that I go into in my, in my course. And it's a, people think they're self-aware, but really what they are is the self-conscious. You yeah. know, it's the guilt, it's the ego, it's the proving to others. That's self-conscious. Self-aware is living within yourself and saying, I'm very happy with how I am. And if I'm saying something that I don't agree with, it's because I'm looking to better myself without at being at the expense of somebody else or to make somebody else happy or something. And that was where I was too, like you're talking about. I felt like I was the greatest people pleaser in the world, but the problem was I was pleasing no one at the top mm -hmm. of the list was my wife, you know, my first wife as well, because after I went through coaching and did a lot of soul searching and recognized I shouldn't have been in that first marriage. We were married for almost 25 years, had many good years, four beautiful children, and as a result, we now have eight grandchildren. But we, our values were never the same. Yeah. And going through coaching made me learn what my values really were and how her values, which I came to understand without her telling me, I understood what her values were because I was with her for 25 years. So when I started to go out there and become the person I wanted to be, and I started to date, I was looking for women who would answer the questions of what their values were and how they fit into my life. I would basically interview them on the dates without them <laughs> knowing they're being interviewed. But what was I looking for? I was looking for the one that could fit in with me. Yeah. And it took me a couple of years. And one day a woman calls me up, a friend of mine. She says, I got someone you got to take out. I'm like, okay, great. You, I trust you. We'll go out. And she was hitting all the numbers. She was every, every value, everything. We were in sync. And about a month into it, I said, I got to tell you something. And I don't need to hear it from you. But I want to tell you that I'm falling in love with you because I love who you are. And I love that you see me as I am. And you're not trying to change me. Well, yeah. on June 3rd of 2023, we'll be married for five years. Wow. Yeah, that's exactly what I went through. I wanted somebody that wasn't going to change me. My first wife tried to fit me into her mold, and it was all about what she wanted. Everything that I did basically was for her. Yeah. And, and now it's for the both of us. That's right. It's, it's not just, you know, me catering to her or her just catering to me. My values were family. I I want a big family. I want those get togethers, you know, holidays, get together, birthdays, get together, mm. you know, uh, family vacations, all that kind of stuff. And now I'm seeing it and it's it, it just uh, just made seven years for us. Beautiful. Congratulations. Which kind of leads right into um, three kids, <laughs> three grandkids, three grandkids. Beautiful. Which goes right into the next R, which is recognize, recognize by being grateful for everything that you have in your life. Mm -hmm. Like you just did. Right. Yeah. So that's the next R recognize that what I have around me is so beautiful that thank you up there for having this in my life. Yes, yes. Okay, now we're moving on to the I. The I. So I is imagination. Think big, right? Dr. Norman Vincent Peale said, you know, the power of positive thinking. Shoot for the stars. You may hit the moon. Right? And when you hit the moon, great. You're halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> so think big. Have an imagination of trying to come up with whatever it is that you want. Don't hold yourself back mm. and don't say I can't to anything. Because as soon as you say I can't, you're feeding the lack and you're feeding that gremlin in your mind telling you you're not good enough. Oh, my gosh. How much I've battled that. That's mm -hmm. crazy. Everything I do, I feel like I'm, I've am i failed at. Yeah. And not recognizing the successes that I've had. Ah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the, here's the thing about failure. Failure is just a lesson that you need to learn from to move on. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing. <laughs> True. True. It could, but it's how you look at it. Instead of saying, okay, I just blew $10,000 on this. What did I learn from that? 
just as an example. What, what did I get out of it? If I do it again, <laughs> I'm a I'm in, in a New York term, I'm a schmuck. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I got fired from my last job. And uh-huh. I thought, oh, my gosh, this is the end of the world. But it ended up leading me to doing this full time. And it's opened up new doors for me. And even though sometimes I, I'm like, God, I can't believe I got fired. I just don't get fired from jobs. And then I'm like, you dummy. It was for the best. Right. You know? Right. Look how it's changed things. Exactly. So, yeah. And you know what? There's a great book that I read as I was starting coach, coach training. It was mm-hmm. called The Four Agreements. Have you ever heard that book? No, I haven't. So it's a great book. Um, and he talks about, his name is Don Miguel Ruiz, that there are four agreements that you have to make with yourself. One is be impeccable with your words. And the second one is what we're talking about here. Don't take anything personally. It wasn't personal that they fired you. It might have been for them, but don't make it personal for you. Yeah. And then don't make any assumptions and always do your best. So when I read this book, and I read, don't take anything personally. It was like a, sh- a blast of light had hit me in the face and saying, hello, <laughs> what it's all about. You take everything personally. I, yeah, I tend to do that. Oh, all right. Why? Yeah. All right. Well, so that's now, a great book. Go out and get that. I'm definitely going to have to look that up. Now we're moving on to the O. Oh, be oh. optimistic. Oh, be optimistic. <laughs> Look through the rose-colored glasses for everything that's coming into your life. Even the tough stuff. Saying, what can I learn from this? How can I turn what could be a challenge into an opportunity? Just like you did when you got fired. Yep. And- you didn't let yourself get into the muck and mire of it all. I could have easily went into a slump for sure. But, you know, doing this, getting into the editing part. Well, I don't know anything about computers. A friend of mine, his kid is a whiz. He knows how to do all the editing and everything. He says, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna help you out. And I said, all right, as soon as we can start making some money at this, I'm going to start paying you. I said, but, you know, I just need some help right now. At least help me get off the ground. And, oh yeah, he was on board. He was ready to go. And then when it came to the nitty gritty, he didn't show up. <laughs> I ended up uh, finding an editing program and went to YouTube to learn how to run this program where it was for a, about a month. I'd, I'd watch a few seconds of it. And then I'd start doing what it told me to do. And I just kept doing it over and over again until finally I figured out how to do this stuff. I, I can do it in my sleep now. Yeah. So what did you do? You, you you did the W. You looked for the wisdom. Mm-hmm. You could have easily said, okay, I give up. I can't do this anymore. Instead, you said, well, how can I do it? That's what's great about YouTube and great about Google and all these other stuff. When I got divorced, you know, I was like, what the heck am I going to do? My, and my kids would come to New York every other weekend. I would go to New Jersey and pick them up, bring them back to Brooklyn, where I moved back closer to my family. And Friday night dinner is a big thing. I'm Orthodox Jewish. We would go to my family for dinner on Friday nights. And my kids were like, Dad, we don't always want to go to mom, to grandma, or to your sisters for dinner on Friday night. We just want to hang. So I said to my kids, okay, if you are patient with me and let me test out foods and learn how to cook and then i'll cook i married a woman who is in corporate america now my second wife hates to cook she's a great cook but hates to cook i work out of my house i'm the cook in the house that's how much i love it because i figured out how to do it i was adaptable okay same thing for you exactly um and as I say, I picked it up and now I'm looking for a different program to see if I can take it even further. Um, right. New computer, the whole nine yards. So right, we're right. going to see I know, where it I takes know that me. the people who do my editing for stuff, they love Da Vinci. Mostly for videos, but Da Vinci, they love that one. I might have to look into that. There you go. So we're moving on to another R. Another R. A lot of R's in this word. I had to pick a word with a lot of R's. So... <laughs> It's resilient. Be resilient. Be flexible. 
and have an open mind when things aren't going exactly right to say, okay, I've got to make that course correction mm -hmm. and make the changes and say, okay, I learned something here. Didn't go the way I want. Now I know what not to do and how to move forward to do the things that what do work. When you were doing the editing, did it work exactly right every time? Oh, no. No, <laughs> of course not. Didn't work out perfect every time. And the, the way I edited in the beginning, I, I could tell there wasn't any true flair to it. I mean, it was new to me, and I was right. excited that I was learning something new, but I'd see what other people were doing. I was like, uh, this is not up to par with everybody else. And right. I've, I've had to make some changes along the way. And, right. and now you uh, look at yourself, you go, who was that guy? I could yeah. I could run circles around that guy now. <laughs> Definitely. There you so go. We've... All right. So uh is it just warrior or is it warriors? Just warrior. Just warrior. Okay. Just and one you... warrior. <laughs> just one warrior. And you've written written a book. Written a book. And you have cards coming out to June 14th, 2023. Again, warrior to warrior. Seven steps to uncover the warrior within and live incredibly full every day. And I'm so fortunate to have the woman who I talked about a little earlier, Genevieve, Genevieve Davis. I've created such a great relationship with her that she wrote my foreword. So all you have to do is put it out there and ask. She said, send me the book. I sent it to her. She goes, I love this book. I can't wait to write the foreword for you. Wow. That's pretty cool. And you and you you brought the cards out a while ago, but um, yeah. can you explain them those a little bit sure. more? So the cards, what the cards do is it it's basically if somebody's never taken the course or never read the book, it's a great way to get an, a little bit of an idea of what I do, what the principles are in my in my course and my book. Right? So give me a number between 1 and 32. Between one and 32. Let's try 15. 15. Okay. So card number 15 is uncover, unlock. Okay? okay. So part of my system is another acronym called uncover, the seven steps to uncover your greatness so you can live incredibly full every day. And unlock is unlock and unleash. But in this case, unlock what's keeping you stuck. Okay. It says, look closely at what secrets are keeping you stuck. Stuck means you can't move forward because you have emotions that are holding you back from the happiness you deserve. Think about where you are now in your life. Are you happy in your current place in life? What does that happiness look like? Does it come with a price? Maybe that price is feelings of discontent, uncertainty, disillusionment. The journey begins by understanding what's keeping you stuck where you are now. You don't know what you don't know, Sometimes you're emotionally tied to certain feelings that you don't understand. It's those very feelings that are keeping you stuck. Perfect example for you yesterday. Look, there's a reason why this card came up. You sitting by the, by the, by the shore, going through by the lake, wherever it was. I don't remember the river, the, the lake, the river, the river, thinking about what's keeping you stuck. You got to unlock it. Yeah. And I tell you what, I recommend that to anyone. If you can get by the water, put your feet in the water and just imagine all that negativity, just leaving your body and then flowing away with the water. Right. Right. Yeah. So that gives you a little bit of an idea. That's the you of the unlock. There's actually unlock and unleash and a bunch of other cards. And we had touched on it. So I want to bring it up a little bit now. Something earlier about self-conscious versus self-aware. Remember that? Mm -hmm. So self-consciousness comes from a place of negative energy, guilt, conflict, and doubt. Self-consciousness self -conscious is more outward directed. It's being more concerned about what others are thinking of you and how the situation is going to affect you. You probably react to uncomfortable situations instead of respond. There's a little more, but that you get the gist. Self-awareness comes from a place of positive energy acceptance, contentment, and self-assuredness. Self-awareness is more inward-facing. You have an accurate and realistic understanding of how you are responding to situations and how you feel about things. 
Now, with each step that you're taking, mm -hmm. there's some, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Some subtext to it, I guess, where say you want to be more confident and you want to think more positively, but you've got to kind of get to that point. Do you yeah. help people get to that point where they can move yes. on to that step? That's what happens in coaching. I have a coaching group. Uh, mastermind one-on-one -on -one, depending on what the pre people want and how deep they want to go and it's about reinforcing it because it you've probably heard this millions of times over the years you want to change a habit it takes at least 21 days to change a habit yes right whether the science of that is true or not doesn't really matter but what it does take is consistency and every time you go back to that habit you're almost at square one again but if you have a coach in the way in there with you, someone who is there to support you, be objective and tell you you're doing great and help you make those course corrections along the way so that you stay on on target, then that's half the battle. You know, coaches need coaches. I say everybody needs coaches. I have two, three coaches in different parts of my life at all times now because it's about recognizing that there are days that I'm going to say, I don't think I can do this. And it's about getting that reinforcement that, yes, you can. <laughs> now, one question that's going to pop up out there, because right. I've been there myself, is you want to you want to do these things, like you know, take your course and all, but there's the financial part of it. Right. What do you do with someone who wants to very badly, but they just cannot afford it? Okay. So there's a thing in my course that talks about financial abundance. There's a section mm -hmm. and understanding how your finances hold you back. Okay. So first thing is you don't have to take the whole bite of the apple at one time. Mm -hmm. right? And my, to take me one-on-one -on -one is expensive because I believe in what I do is important and I value my services. Okay. But you could easily buy the book. And somebody recently said to me, this isn't a book that you just read and put to the side. If you really want to get the, the most out of it, you read it, you apply it and you go back and read it again. There's a, a QR code in here that when mm -hmm. you get the book, you, you click on the QR code and it gives you homework. Okay. We don't like to use the word homework, success activities for you to download and do the work that you need to do on yourself. So that's number one. You could spend $20 on a book. The book's $19.99. If you can't afford that, then we got some real stuff to go through. <laughs> All right. hey, you know, there are some folks out there that are probably in that situation, but you know, I get you. 20, bucks, I get 20 you. bucks is not bad. Not bad. Not bad. So now in the book, it talks about financial abundance and there's a card on it as well. And what I did, look, I lost everything in 2008. I was three plus million dollars in the hole between what I'd lost and my investors and people I borrowed money from. And I could have legally said, well, screw this and just end it all and leave it for other people to worry about, you know, but I did. I figured it out. I got through it and the investors had to take their hit or get back some of their money and the the, the, the borrower, the lenders had to take a few years to get their money back. Okay. But along this way, I met Genevieve Davis, who I've talked about a couple of things. And she talked about making yourself, paying yourself first. Now, for every dollar that I get in, 40 cents of it, I put to the side for myself. I pay myself first. And I have four different uh, categories that I put that money into. Okay. So let me pull out that card so that I say it the correct way. And you see, everything I do has got stuff behind it. And I use it because it, the, the, the cards are there to be a tangible reinforcement for what, whatever you're doing. If you didn't take the course, that's a great way to learn it. So there's four sets. So I take 40% of my money, big purchases, fun money, giving to others. And then the last one could be golden goose, emergency money, pay down debt, whatever is work in your, happening in your life. If you got a lot of debt, put it in there and pay down the debt, right? And the fun money one, I think is one of the most important ones. 
Because if you're not taking time to enjoy your life, then what are you doing? And you see this sign here? Can you read what it says? No, no, unfortunately. No. It says, never get busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Right? So I say that you put 10% of the, you know, one 10% of your money, because we're taking 40%. So 10% of the money you put towards a fund or put it in an envelope. You could open up a separate bank account into fund. And you do something fun every 90 days at least. I'll give you a perfect example. A couple of years ago, I decided I wanted to do something that was on my bucket list forever. Skydive. Right? And everyone's like, right. you really going to jump out of the out of a plane? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to do it. And I paid for the high package so that I could get the video as well. And I loved every minute of it. And I the money came from my fun money account. Okay? One day I had to take my car in to be fixed. All right? I, and they were not fixed, uh, but, uh, you know, just to check, oil change and whatever. Thinking it's going to be maybe $100. Calls me up. Hey, you got this, your braking pad, your brake pad, your this, your that. I'm not, a, I'm not a car guy. I'm just not. I don't know from these things. He says, it's going to cost you $500. The old me was like, oh my God, how am I going to pay for this? The other me was like, oh, I got money in either my emergency account or my big purchases. I looked, I said, all right, good. I've got the money there. I paid it out of that account and I didn't have to worry about it. Now, I know what some of the people in the audience are going to say. 40%, are you freaking nuts? How am I going to take 40% out of my money? Take 10%, take 20%, whatever it is. And learn with your mindset that you could still live on the money that you thought you had 100% that you needed to use. It'll happen for you. You'll say, you know what? Maybe I don't need to have Starbucks every day. Or maybe I just refigure how the money's coming in and going out. And I make it work for me and eventually work yourself up to 40%. And before you know it, you say, oh, I want to take a coaching course. Great. I could take that from the golden goose. I could take it from the big purchases, whatever thing you want to take it to that you feel that does. For me, it could be golden goose because you're bettering yourself. And to me, the golden goose is reinvesting in yourself or for the rainy day or what's going to happen when I'm retired, whatever. To be whatever that what number you want to be. And where would someone purchase this book? Well, the easiest way, the book isn't going to be available till June 14th. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they can go to Amazon, but I have a website and it's a very easy link. It's called connectwithmartin.com. Okay. Let's put that in. You can get my book. You can get the cards. You can get a free gift. For example, you can download a two page thing on the cycle of A's, which was part of the warrior that we talked about. Ask, act, attitude, and write down, what am I asking for? What am I doing to get it, to get what I asked for? What the work, what acts am I gonna do? Mm -hmm. And then write down what's happening, good and bad, because really the bad is just you needing to understand you gotta fix your mindset, fix your directional a little bit and keep going. And do you also have social media? I do. The Warrior's Life Code. That's on uh, on Instagram. You can check me out on Facebook, Martin Salama. And how about this? I love cooking so much. I started a YouTube channel. With oh, did you? Coaching. Yep. Nice. So you oh, go man. there, Martin Salama, and you can watch me cook and coach at the same time. Well, we're going to have to swap recipes then. All right, man. Listen, I love cooking I too. To do, I love smoking meat. Yeah. Love smoking, especially with the new Traegers and the camp camp chefs out there with the pellets. Mm -hmm. I took the easy way out. <laughs> <With those things. laughs> yeah, we, we got a bunch of those pellets and I ended up not using them and we had run out of firewood. We wanted to fire up the, the fire pit. Right. I was like, oh, let's try these pellets. Threw them on there and it wasn't a, a huge fire, but it, hey, it kept us warm all night anyway. All right, cool. <laughs> but I like my pellet grill. I've been using it for five years now. Love really? it. Love it. Love it. I have Camp Shep. I, I, for me, I want to, I'm a New Yorker, right? We want to make things as easy as possible. So I don't have to sit there and stoke the fires and make sure the temperature's right 
the pellet grill with the with the computer keeps it at the temperature it needs to be close enough. Oh, that's cheating, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's you the know name? It, I know it, but who cares? The meat's still good. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's the name of that YouTube channel? Martin Salama. Just Martin Salama? Okay. That's it. Well, I'm going to add all those into the description so people can just click on it and go straight to them. Thank you. And Martin, thank you so much, man. This has been great. And uh, Kyle, I loved every minute. I hope uh, everybody out there picks something up from this. And uh, like I said, I'm going to put the links in the description. So check it out. You said June 14th, the book comes out. June 14th. All right. So everybody be ready for that. Fantastic. And again, thank you. I want to thank all of you out there. If you are new to the channel, well, I hope you'll come back. Please hit that subscribe button for my regulars. You guys are awesome because you make it possible for me to do this. Until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.